Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Fraser here from RugbyStrengthAndConditioning.com. I'm the strength coach for the Biella Bears out here in Biella, Italy. And today we're talking about our staple strength exercises for rugby players. Stick around until the end of the video because I have a strength challenge for you guys. It's a simple strength challenge, but not so easy strength challenge. And I want to read in the comment section if you guys were able to meet the target or not. So first up is the trap bar deadlift, which is a hybrid of the squat pattern and the hinge pattern. Due to the nature of the range of motion of this movement, you're going to be able to lift higher loads than you could, for example, in a typical back squat. This makes it a great movement for rugby players who are trying to get stronger, trying to improve their ability to produce force. When you're performing the trap bar deadlift, keep your arms nice and long, your back straight, and just press the ground away. We use this movement at the end of pre-season and we certainly cycle it in and out during the season as well. So the mid thigh pull is a great athletic exercise. You have to use the full kinetic chain, extend through the knee, the hip, the ankle, and finish with an aggressive shrug. When you're performing this exercise, try and imagine that you're just trying to peek over a wall that you have to go on your tiptoes for. So you can't see over this wall and you have to peek over. It's another exercise where you're going to want to keep your arms nice and long as well. So you might challenge me and say, hey, this is more of a power exercise. And listen, with all these staple strength lifts, you can modify the load and then change the outcome of training based on what load you're using because that will affect the velocity of the barbell, such as with the trap bar, you could do trap bar jumps or speed pulls, etc. This lift is a strength speed lift, so you'll be able to shift a good amount of weight on this one more than your power clean, but of course, you can vary the load, all right? I really like this as it's something that you can modify like all the main exercises, volume and intensity, depending what training outcome you want. So yes, it's always going to be explosive. Explosive strength is something that we really need in rugby and this is a great staple exercise to include in your programming. So I couldn't make a strength video without talking about the classic lift that everyone loves, the bench press. This is a great option for developing upper body strength in a horizontal pressing pattern, okay? This is useful in rugby for getting up off the ground quickly. It's useful for helping with the fend. And of course, there is a muscle building element to this which can serve as a bit of protection, if you like, some muscle armor when it comes to taking hits and contact in rugby. When you're performing this lift, imagine that you have to break the bar. Clearly that's impossible, but that will help engage the, the muscles in the correct way. Stability is king when we're looking at producing force, so make sure you've got your feet set in the right position, uh, your, your feet are tucked, your hips are ready to drive, and everything in the shoulder on the bench press is locked down and stable. So if we press, we have to pull, all right? So the bench row, or the seal row, sometimes referred to, is a great exercise for the musculature of the upper back and the elbow flexors and the lats, okay? It's helpful in rugby because imagine you're trying to hold a player up if that's what the situation calls for, those muscles are going to help. Similarly, if you're ripping a ball, yes, granted it's a rotational movement, you're using your legs, your full kinetic chain, but it helps to have strong upper back and uh, strong elbow flexors. Lastly, of course, in the tackle, the last part of the tackle, when you're closing that gap, you've made your hit, you've got the contact, everything's in the right spot, and you have to have that ring of steel, as, as some coaches would refer to it as, keeping that ring of steel and pulling yourself in, finishing the tackle, that's pulling muscles. That's not this action, that is this action, okay? So it's helpful to be strong in the pulling pattern for rugby. When you're doing this lift, make sure your scap are free moving, your scapula is free moving, so you can protract and retract, all right? And make sure you're getting that humeral head in this position here and not this position. So the Romanian deadlift or the RDL is super important for developing the posterior chain, hamstrings, glutes, and lower back. This is a position that we see in rugby a lot, in scrums, in rucks, so it makes sense to be strong there. By strengthening the muscles in this position, it also helps mitigate against the risk of having hamstring pulls during high-speed running as part of an overall strategy. When you're doing this movement, keep your back straight and it helps to just imagine that you're closing a car door behind you. So hips back, give it a bump to the car door, make sure that closes and then hips through. So push press is another staple lift, another main lift. If you do push press and your 1RM goes up by 20 kilograms, then your military press will also go up in most cases. Yes, it's an athletic movement and there is hip drive to it and I love that about it. Again, you can manipulate the load based on what outcome of training you want. If you want to focus more on, on the velocity or you want to focus more on force, it's good to use it all throughout the year and this is one that you can use at every stage of training. 
Again, it's the main lift, so you can progress year on year and you should see your 1RM creep up year on year on year, all right? When you're performing push press, make sure you're staying strong through the trunk and your rib cage stays down. A common error is that we're rocking back and even sometimes when I'm tired, I do the same thing and it's just a case of trying to really brace and stay strong through the trunk. The next thing to think about is breaking a glass ceiling at the very top of your reach. That'll help you to keep accelerating that bar right through to the end of the lift. So of course we've done the press, we need to do the pull. So pull ups or chin ups, depending on where you place your hand, is a great exercise for developing the musculature of the upper back, the lats and the elbow flexors. It's just a vertical pulling movement and it can be loaded over time. Do not be afraid to add weight to this when you get to the point where you can do repetitions. When you're performing the chin up with weight, you don't necessarily need to hang loose at the bottom with the shoulders. Do extend your arms, keep the shoulders somewhat engaged. As you pull yourself up and get your elbows into your pockets, think about getting your clavicle, think about getting your chest towards uh, the top, all right, and bring those shoulder blades down and in at the top of the chin up to complete it. So the back squat is another classic lift, which is great for lower body strength. You're gonna be developing quad strength, hamstring strength, and glute strength. The standards that we're looking for on the squat is making sure that our hip comes down in line with our knee or below, and that's gonna depend on your anatomy, your flexibility, mobility, your skill with the back squat, and certainly, certainly how you've set up. On the back squat, keep the musculature of the upper back engaged. It's almost like you're doing a static pull up. Pull that bar down on the musculature of the upper back. Push your hips back, keep your heels down, and make sure your knees are tracking in line with your toes. So the Bulgarian split squat is another staple in our programming. Yes, it's a unilateral movement, and that's not to say unilateral movements are bad. They are very, very good. Typically, we use them as a secondary strength exercise, but often our Bul Bulgarian split squat is one of our main exercises. Again, because you can load it all throughout the year and you can progress from year on year. If you follow me on Instagram, then you'll see that some of our guys are doing 1.3, 1.4 of body weight for three reps on the Bulgarian split squat. So you can get a lot of weight through that lead leg. Now that's the important thing here. When you're doing Bulgarian split squats, try to get as much of the weight through the lead leg, okay? Heel down, knee tracking in line with the toe and being active with the upper body. And the back leg is more for balance. Yes, there will be a bit of distribution of weight through the back leg, but the point is you're trying to focus as much as you can on that lead leg. We typically cycle our single leg or unilateral work between Bulgarian split squats, pistol squat variations, lunge variations, um, and also step ups depending on what phase of training we're in, whether it's max strength, muscle building, or, or power. So the last exercise is definitely an auxiliary exercise. It is the single leg, single arm overhead press. Don't ask me to say that again. Now this is a great exercise for developing shoulder strength, sure. But like I said at the start, if you develop your push press, the other lifts will kind of go up around that. So this is also great for developing and challenging trunk strength. When people do this, they'll have a bit of stability issues, they'll have to brace to the core, and that's why I really like this movement for rugby players. Yes, it's not a main lift, you wouldn't program everything based around this lift, but I wanted to include something that was a little bit different here that I still find really valuable, and something that we've been using for the last two years and had great results with. And that leads me nicely on to today's challenge, which is super simple strength challenge. Forget the weights. All you're gonna do is stand on one leg for 30 seconds. Seems easy? I know. All right, it won't be when you do it correctly. Okay, so stand on one leg, everything has to be extended. Your free leg has to be bent at 90 degrees and um, hip flexion of 90 degrees as well, just as I'm showing you here. What you'll see and what I see with players, and I think what will happen with a lot of you guys, let me know in the comments section, is you'll either start to lean back or you'll lose your hip extension, you'll start to come here, or you'll lean back, or you'll lose your balance, or your free leg will start to just get a bit tired and start to drop. From this simple little test, there's lots of exercises that we can start to bring into our programming to sort of make sure that we're working on certain things like glute activation or maybe hip flexor strength. So it can open up a whole host of, of different things, um, none of which is bad, and it's something that is easy, really easy to assess and do. I think sometimes that we use, uh, we want to make things as complicated as we can. There are lots of different ways we can test strength, absolutely, from max strength testing to um, 
various different exercises that are really low level but are very useful. This is just one little simple thing. I want to hear how you get on. That's all I'm going to say for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found it useful. Cheers.